Well, good afternoon and welcome to the next episode of the Digital Diaries. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Emma Hill, who works at Dochgarach Primary School, or Nursery School rather, I should say. Um, and I've not had a, one of these um, episodes for a few days. I've had a, a few days doing various things. Um, so it's nice to get back into, into having these chats, which I think are really interesting. So welcome, Emma. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. And how? Yes, yeah, okay. I was going to say how how has lockdown been for you so far? It's been not bad actually. I'm getting into the swing of it now. I'm quite enjoying it. Aye, I think that it's been so long that you do you get into that routine that actually when we go back to some kind of normal, it will seem quite strange, won't it? I know, Talk about, I mean, it's bad enough after six weeks summer holiday. Never mind. No, not exactly. I know. <laughs> Do you want to just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, where you work um, and sort of what your your background is? Yeah, well, I am working at Doch Garrick Nursery and I've been here for about five years. Okay. That's I've only been an EYP there. I haven't been anywhere else, although I've covered and visited. Um, I've done various roles over my life, but I've always had an interest in some sort of technology. Mm -hmm. It's just been my thing i remember we had a bbc micro computer and a, mm -hmm. an amiga and all these things growing up so i've always been a bit nerdy that way <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of the uip what what brought you into working in nursery i it's something i've always wanted to do i like working with small children i i just enjoy it i love seeing them develop and grow over time and their learning's just amazing and what size of nursery does Doc Garrick have at the moment? How many pupils? We have seven. Okay. So, yeah. Bumper number. Well, I used to be head teacher at Marybank and Garve. And at one point, I think Marybank had five and Garve had two. So, yeah. And I know it has its challenges, but it also has the rewards of getting to know the kids so well. Yeah, no, you, you really do know them well. I mean, I have had a couple of years where I've had two. Yep. And... But it, it's great because you are involved with them and you are playing with them constantly and with them learning all the time. Yeah. And are you on your own there? I have a support worker as well. Right. So okay. that's that's really good. Yeah, that makes we're a doing difference. The, we're doing the 1130, 1140 sorry, hours already. Ah, okay, right. So, yeah, that does make a difference having somebody to, to bounce off a bit. Yeah. So you mentioned about the digital skills and um, you kind of talked about the fact that a lot of it has just been sort of learned through just being around technology. What's that? What's the kind of one thing that jumps out at you as being that thing that you kind of maybe as a child played with or used that made you think, well, this is quite cool. You mentioned a few different sort of platforms or consoles that you had when you were growing up. Yeah, no, I, I just... I just love trying it out and seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember, I feel really old when I say this, but when um, games for computers were on cassette tapes, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I just, I have a great thing for doing that and trying it. And yeah. You either like it or you don't like it and carry yeah. on. I remember buying a robot on Holiday in Woolworths years ago. <laughs> and I just loved being able to move it and program it around. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, the programming is one of these skills that a lot of kids don't actually realise is, a, is a, a kind of digital skill. They just think it's a toy. Um, it's actually very clever. Um, when you can see what some of the, the robots can do these days, it's incredible how much you can program them. So in terms of, the, the I suppose, your setting of working in the early years, what kind of um, technology would, I suppose, would I see if I came into your nursery setting? What, what would be the kind of one or two things that you would flag up as being particularly... Uh, well used. So we have a kiddie zoom camera. Ah, okay. That they they take um, photos of that through the week. We have jobs, mm -hmm. and we have a photographer. And at the end of the week, 
I download it all onto a card and put it in our digital photo frame, which is in the cloakroom. So the parents can see what the children have been seeing, which is yep. completely different from what we see. Yeah, um, that's, with, that's really good. Yeah, I love the, the idea that, um, and as adults, we get really hung up on having everything you know, done perfectly. Photos taken, displays done perfectly. That's really yeah. nice to hear. Um, um, what else do they have? They have a smart board. Yep. We've got an iPad. We've got a Chrome pad. Ah, okay. Um, I borrowed a Chromebook from the class. Um, what else have we got? What else do we have? Uh, B-Bots, Spheros. Brilliant. So a full range. Yeah. And what's the kind of approach that you take? Is it sort of showing them how to use them or is there a lot of just experimenting and letting them actually just try them out? A lot for me is just experimenting. That's the way I work. Yeah. So I'll just, so the Spheros, um, we're in the cluster with Tom Cross and Tanasi, so they belong yeah. to the cluster. Uh, I'm just lucky yeah. I've got them yeah. before. <laughs> um, so they will, they just love it. So I just put the program on for them, open the app and say, you just need to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do what you want and they'll sit there. Yeah. And they'll do it, and they have a time limit. They, they, you know, they can't be on it. Although they're open to when they want to be on it, they don't get to be on it all the time because they would just yeah. flip onto another app. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I, I, I've been doing this training for the past, probably the past two years, and one of the things that I keep saying is where nursery children are now, or nursery age kids are now, is where probably P1, P2s were about five years ago. Um, you know, I think back to my nursery at Milton of Lays, maybe. Five years ago, someone walked in and had said, wait till you see this, this child can turn the computer on or they can use the mouse pad. Whereas now, that's completely different. I mean, what, what do you see in terms of the children's digital skills now? Oh, they're, they're very willing to just give it a go, but I think so much of that's maybe because they've got tablets at home yeah. and things like that. So they're more confident rather than maybe not so much when people didn't have tablets or only parents had tablets. And yeah. like, Don't touch that in case yeah. you break it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And in terms of training courses that you've been on, is there anything that you've been on for any of these tools that you've got? Um, not not previous. I've I did go on your book creator training ah, yep. not that long ago because myself and support worker we were discussing this, and it was online floor books, and we thought this would be a great idea. Yep. Not just us that thought about that. I have seen yeah. other people, <laughs> but to me. I think it's a fabulous thing that they can do as well, that they might yeah. be able to open up in yeah. the nursery and they can add their wee bits to it as well. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, but I yeah. haven't done any formal training since my standard grade computing studies. Ah, I did the same course, actually. I think my claim to fame, I think I'm probably showing my age here slightly, is that I was the very first year to do standard grade and my very first standard grade was computer studies. Mm -hmm. Um, programming back there, yeah. No, I think you're right. I think that um, experimenting is, is huge. Where, where do you see that experimenting become, I suppose, a bit more formal, where you're almost saying to the kids, well, you've, you've, you've played with that now maybe for a year and a half. Now you need to learn how to use it, you know, not, not necessarily formally, but to use it more for a purpose. Do you see that in nursery or is that, do you think, more when you go into P1? I think that's more P1 based. I, I'm very much, we will learn and you can, I can move them up a level. Yeah. So this even thing, basic things like B-Bots mm -hmm. um, and they can create a map yeah. as they grow older to make it follow that. But for me, it's very much experimenting at this age. Yeah. And how closely do you work with the P1 staff? roundabout transition. I mean, presumably it's the same whether it's digital or whether it's just the, the normal transition. Yeah, well, we, we we are a unique setting and it's there's a P1 to 6 class. Ah, okay. So we've only got one well, one teacher and we've got cover on a Monday as well. So yeah. it's, but we work very close together as a whole setting. Yeah. But I was going to say, I'm quite curious to know, because obviously at nursery, you could have a three-year-old in the same setting, potentially as I suppose a maybe not quite five, but, you know, a really experienced four-year-olds. Have yeah. you seen the four-year-olds really almost sort of taking a, a lead in terms of digital? You know, if you're using something like a Zoom camera or a, um, a kiddie Zoom or a, you know, a B-Bot, do they sort of take control in terms of showing the younger ones how to use it? Very much so. The Spheros were a big one for that one, mm. I found. 
um, one little girl, she was quite, she, she got into it like nobody's business. I was really surprised <laughs> after about an hour and she was making this wee ball fly about the room, changing <laughs> colors, everything. And one of the younger ones went to go and pick it up to take it back to where they were. And she mm -hmm. goes, no, she says, you don't have to pick it up. She says, you can just make it come back to you. <laughs> so I was like, wow. And that's the kind of thing that if you said, they would just sort of look at you as if, you know, why? Whereas when it's a peer or it's kind of a, another pupil saying that, it just seems to make more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, no, they're very hands on. And because they're not all charged at the same time and yeah. I don't want them all out, but they will share them. So yeah. some of the older ones will work with the younger ones and help them show yeah. them how to do it. I think one of the things that's coming through even already just in this chat is the fact that you're quite clear that digital skills need to be used at the right time. And it's yeah. not just a case of, you know, death by digital, if you like. It has to be sort of used at the right time and also in moderation. Is that important to you? Very much so. I think you can rely on it too much, but the children have to know that they have, sometimes you have to step away yeah. and just take a break. Yeah, and there's so much learning to do out with it. Te digital learning is fantastic, and it's the way of the world. But there's so many other things, and to just get a break. And I mean, we spend a lot of time outside as well. Yeah, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't know if you watched um, Darren Brown's interview, but Darren from the high school talked about the fact he's a computer science teacher, and actually he said that for him, a really successful science, t a computer science teacher, is someone who says. Right, put your devices away. And he said, you know, somebody watching this might think, well, that's a bit strange that a computer science teacher is saying, you know, don't use technology all the time. But he says, again, like you've just said, use it for the right purpose and at the right yeah. time. Mm. So in terms of lockdown, and I'm, 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 this is a, a genuinely curious question, how have you been able to engage with the parents and the pupils? Um, you know, I suppose thinking, specifically about digital skills, but I'm also quite interested to know generally, um, because obviously nursery is so much face-to-face -face, um, yeah. and there's so much sort of guidance. How, how, how has lockdown worked for you in terms of being an, an EYP? It, it's, it's really difficult because you're not with the children and that is the hardest part of doing yeah. the job during lockdown. But we have a weekly overview that we send out to parents. So we've got uh, literacy part and numeracy part, health and well-being and other. Mm -hmm. So we change it up every week. So we carry on doing our book of the week that we used to do in yeah. our setting. We have just started doing a number of the week, which I used to do ages ago. And I thought, <laughs> so we put links to online videos or mm -hmm. games, the things that we found and the ideas that they don't have to do online. Yeah. So there's many things that they won't have to go onto a tablet or whatever for. And then we also, as a cluster, are doing using Seesaw. Ah, perfect, yeah. I was going to say about that, because I knew that you'd had a look at Seesaw and speaking to, to Sarah beforehand. Um, so has that been your sort of communication tool between the parents and Well, and yeah, we hadn't actually used it the early years setting class at nurseries. I'm trying to think what you call yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. um, we hadn't actually used them pre-lockdown. We had plans to, but yeah. it wasn't till sort of August time, I believe. Um, so it's been brought in. So we're all sort of learning as wow. we go. So you've had to sort of pick up how to use it um, yeah. along you. And how have you, I mean, what, I suppose, because I mean, I think across schools and, and nurseries, there's sort of two platforms that are being used, mainly uh, Seesaw and Google Classroom. Those, those are the sort of two that, um, I don't know, has your son used Google Classroom? At yeah. Glenarker? Yeah. Yeah, he uses Google Classroom. We use Google Classroom as staff. Okay, so because yeah. we're a cluster, we have a cluster classroom and myself and my support worker at the nursery in Dukgara, we have our own classroom as well. Right. So you have, so you've seen classroom and you've seen yes. Um And how have parents re reacted to, I suppose, the, the difference in the communication? Because um, I often wonder about nursery in terms of oh, ELC, sorry, I should call it the correct name, um, <laughs> that you know, parents in nursery are so, um, they're meeting you every day when they drop their children off. Um, and I think for a lot of primary aged parents, they're probably having possibly more contact with the school or, than they would ever normally have. 
Is that still the same for your setting or did you actually find that you've got less contact than normal? Some parents have actually got less contact. Yeah. Other parents are engaging so well that it's amazing. Yeah. And one wee child, I just put an wee emoji on a message and she just came back. She goes, I love your emojis. Oh. <laughs> but it's quite nice to see so because I can put videos on. I can just yeah. use a wee voice comment. Yeah. And it's great that way. And they're and loving you, sharing their stuff. How do you think parents, I mean, and obviously yourself as a parent, how do you think parents have reacted to lockdown? Um, I did. A, I was interviewed on Radio Scotland on Saturday um, about lockdown, talking mainly from an education point of view rather than the parent point of view. But the, the, the piece was basically saying that parents have been on a bit of a roller coaster where initially there was this big push to, to really do everything you could do. And you kind of realised maybe halfway through that it's not as possible to do everything that you meant to do. Some, I think, have got to the point of saying, well, I, I can't do anymore. Some are still desperately ploughing on. Where, where do you see the, the kind of parental pressures at lockdown? As a parent of a P7, I find it quite hard. Yeah. Because he's getting that bit older and he's hormonal. and yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just like, oh. But I don't fight. My big thing is we don't fight. Yeah. I will give up for a day rather than have a fight. Yeah, yeah. And I say that to a lot of um, parents that I know who have older siblings from my setting. Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't don't get into that. Just yeah. it, it's it's not going to harm you if you don't if you have a day off. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of parents I know I've got I've got a couple of siblings and one of them say, oh no, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't have to do everything you're given. Yeah. Um, my sister lives in Aberdeenshire and she's like, no, we've got tons to do every day. And she says, we yeah. sit down all day. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think a lot of the, I mean, if a school was going to be listening to this thinking, how can we better help our parents? Do you think it is as simple as saying, you know, to parents that actually there isn't a pressure to do everything? Because I think you know, I think you and I both know from working in schools that when a school gives a lot of work, it's not necessarily because it has to be all done. It's more from the point of view of well, I better make sure that I've at least given them something for them to do. And you yeah. probably do do over plan. Yeah, I mean, I as a parent, we do so much numeracy, so much literacy, yeah. and that's what we do every day. And I've tried to incorporate that in our early years overview as well that. And we say to them, you don't have to do it, yeah. but it's good to do something, especially when, like, my mind is a P7. Yeah. I mean, he just has to, we have to do this and we have to do this. <laughs> but we don't, we don't spend all day sitting no. doing work. No, that's good to hear. Because, I mean, it has to be a balance. And yeah. I, mean, I really like when you said about the fact it's just not worth fighting. Um, no. It's just not, because actually we both know that you don't come out of it you might feel like you've won the fight, but actually probably children involved won't be any sort of mood to do any work. And also, you know, you're probably exhausted from having to have that that battle as well. Yeah, no, it's it, it, to me, it's not, it's the same. I was very much the same with homework beforehand, but mm -hmm. if it was ever going to be a fight, we just weren't doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, good advice, very good advice. And that Third is the point. child down the line, I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've learned. So, you I mean you mentioned about um, going to a session on Book Creator? Um, yeah. During the, are there any other sessions that you've been to during the uh, sort of lockdown? Any other training? Um, I've been doing the early years. We've been doing the new mm. document, realizing the ambition. Ah, with uh, James McTaggart and his team. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually really enjoying that because yeah. I came to be an EYP after building the ambition came out yeah so it's sort of second hand sort of information mm -hmm. you get so much that's interpreted it so it's really good and it's exceptionally interesting I'm loving it yeah. and how has that been doing it um sort of digitally because I know that both well some of the sessions have been so over um subscribed that actually people haven't been able to get onto them I think it's about 500 I think on the in-service day yeah, I did it that morning. <laughs> I had right. a few people messaging going, I can't get on, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was um, massive. How, how, how have you found that kind of type of training versus the face-to-face? -face? I have to say, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I, I really did. I like face-to-face, -face, but sometimes I think it, I think it's a, a quite a good way forward. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's – because I think I was speaking to James about this, and we both felt that because of the time, um, an hour or maybe an hour roughly, is probably enough to concentrate the mind – anything more than that and you do start to drift um yeah i don't know what you think about it. do you think that kind of timing helps as well because i mean what would that session normally if it had been done face to face what would it be a, a full morning session probably probably yeah. probably and i i think i mean the mandatory training we've had this year for yeah. um emotional and neuro de developmental and that i think if it had been done like that because you're not sitting there and you're yeah. You know, it, it's sitting on hard school seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. Well, there's yeah. something to be said about doing from the comfort of your house um, yeah. and being able to actually make yourself comfortable because, yeah, you're right, we, we, all, we all learn when we're comfortable and actually in a, in a place where we can listen. Um, I mean, obviously, some, some people would say they, they struggle doing it at home because of distractions at home. But, um, yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I think it is. Um, well, certainly... Oh, yeah. you, what else? I did. I did another one of your online. It's online safety. Oh, the online safety one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did that last yeah. week. I watched. Well, I didn't watch. I'll let me lie. I listened. To, yeah. Um, on the in-service afternoon because I was right. creating something with Lego. Ah, brilliant. Well, again, that, that's the other thing about it is that you don't have to necessarily watch it because the the audio, um, especially for something like that, is probably enough. Um, but. Let's be honest. If I had to listen to myself for an hour, I'd have done an awful lot more than Lego. I'd have just turned it off and walked outside. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, that, that's something that people have talked about is the fact that being able to do a training afterwards. So, um, and actually, interestingly, people saying, can I still count that towards my, my CPD? Um, which obviously, 100% you can. And actually, in some ways, you probably get more out of it doing it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, what did you make of the online safety stuff? What was the kind of bit that jumped out at you particularly? It's funny because there was you had a part of the different apps, and I yeah. knew I knew about a lot of them, and I'm like, I don't know that one, and I don't know yeah. that one. <laughs> and my son came wandering through, and he goes, I had paused it, and he was like, Do you know all of them? And I'm like, No. And he goes, Well, I know some. Which ones don't you know? And I was like, That one. He goes, Oh, it's that one and that one. And yeah. there was ones that neither of us knew. Uh huh. He didn't know about the calculator. I was going to ask about that, yeah. <laughs> so I told him about that. So I said, if you've got a calculator on your phone, I know what you're doing. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, the, that's the app that people have generally sort of even face-to-face -face or online have gone, wow, I can't believe that. Yeah, um, yeah that was a, I really enjoyed that session because people, I think, got quite a lot of information overload and hopefully it wasn't too overpowering, but... Um, and I think you no, need, I, I think it, I think it was good actually. I think that actually for all staff would be an excellent thing. Yeah. Well, that's my that's my aim, but uh, it's one of these things that people don't tend to sign up for, um, either as a parent or as a member of staff. Yeah, so in no, terms of no, sorry, can you go? No, 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 carry on, carry on. It's fine. I was just going to say, in terms of um, sort of thinking about your again back to your your sort of nursery setting, um, if somebody came in and said. You know, I'm not convinced about this digital thing in the early years. What would be the one thing that you probably would feel that you could show them that would change their mind? What would be that one kind of go-to tool or uh, resource or thing that you've used? I honestly, for me, the Sphero's are brilliant. Yeah, they really are. Between that and the Kiddy Zoom camera, mm -hmm. that they're the two that I I love the kids using because they're doing it just about all themselves yeah i mean whoever's quite often everybody wants to be the photographer for the day <laughs> <laughs> um the one thing i don't like doing is deleting photos that are of pictures of thumbs and because <laughs> we yeah. have hundreds of them yeah um, but they are my two because they are doing it all themselves it's yeah. easy enough to get a chromebook or and set up a game on it and things like that but for them to have the spheros and they could just get it and as long as i brought up the app they do all the colours. They make it go wherever they want it to go. And that's amazing. Yeah. I have to say, I find the sphere quite complicated. Um, this is more about my brain. Um, I have I to went... say, my top tip is take it home. 
and do yeah. it yourself first. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think I, I, uh, I haven't got the patience for it. But I mean, in effect, the, the, the spheros were designed to be a sort of upgraded version of B-Bots to some mm -hmm. degree. Um, I mean, obviously, you can do both. You can do different things with both. But um, when you think about the B-Bot and what it can do compared to the Sphero, it's incredible just how oh, technology yeah. has changed. Um, if I asked the kids in your nursery what's their kind of favourite ICT thing, what would they say? Probably the same. Uh, camera, spheros, and the smart board, I would say. They love to draw right. on the smart board. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, the smart board, people say about, what, you know, where, where would you have a smart board ideally placed in a school? I've always said early years is a place to do it. Um, well, particularly we, with Chromebooks now up the school. Yeah, we have just got the smart board this year because oh, okay. we've moved rooms um, yeah. and we've got a much bigger space. Um, so we've now got access to the smart board and we've got a wee stage that they step up onto. It was there for the class it was in before. Yeah. Um, but they're now up there and as soon as the smart board's on, somebody's up there drawing on it. Yeah. Using the pens or the finger. Using the pens or their fingers. Yeah. Pens on who it is at the time. You can really freak the children out by changing the pens around colour-wise because the way it works is that when you lift whatever the item is off that particular colour um, bit, it will paint in that colour. So you could switch the red and blue around and pick the blue pen up and it will write in red if you've got it on the red stand yeah. bit. Um, but really, kids can't get that at all. They're totally confused by that. It's also good if you ever lose one of the pens, you can use something like Unifix cubes because you actually don't oh, need to have right, a pen. Yeah. It's just something to put the pressure on the... Sorry, mm -hmm. if, if, well, anyway, from smarts watching this, you, you, you need to buy the pen because the pen is the right thing to use. But <laughs> if nobody from smarts watching it, just get some Unifix cubes because it's cheaper. Um, yeah, no, that's, ni that's nice to hear. So in terms, of, I suppose, the final couple of questions, one would be um, what's your next challenge for kind of digital skills, either for yourself, maybe, or for the nursery? What's that thing that you've seen or heard about and think, I would love to know more about that? Um, well, I'm trying to think. I mean, book creator is my next thing to be using yeah. in the printing. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned about using that as a sort of floor planner. How do you see that as working? As a floor book. As a floor, floor book. book. Yeah. So our learning at the moment goes into what the, a paper book, Yeah. which is great for the children and it's fabulous. Uh, but I just thought to put a spin on it and not, we do a lot of floor books. So we've got one for our books of the week. We've got one for our interest. We have one for outdoors. We've got quite a lot of floor books all going on at the same time. Yeah. But I thought it'd be quite nice if we had one that was maybe a digital one mm -hmm. for an interest and they can yeah. put their wee voice clips on. So to take that into them. Yeah. Um, And I was planning on doing maybe a yearbook for them for the end of this year. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. There's so, something, I don't know if you've seen the, 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 I did a session on the in-service day on using Book Creator for yearbooks. So there's actually a, a, a recording that you can look at and there's actually yeah. template, a template that Book Creator have created that you can now use to create a yearbook. So um, yeah, definitely worth, it's a good tool for that. Yeah. And um, just final question would be, so if somebody was watching this and thinking, you know, I just don't get the digital thing. Maybe it's through confidence, maybe it's through lack of knowledge, but what would be your advice to somebody that just said, I just don't see the, I don't see the value of it? Just give it a go. Just give yeah. it a go. You never know. Different things interest different people in digital things. My mm -hmm. husband hates games. <laughs> Any kind of online, not even online games, just a game on your phone, a game yeah. on an Xbox, hates any of that. But he'll sit for ages on eBay. Yeah, <laughs> but there, I think there's something for everybody. Yeah, in digital learning, yeah. you know, it's whether it's programming a robot, whether it's a game that you found online, whether it's taking photos with a camera, mm -hmm. you don't realise how much there is in digital learning that you don't think about. I was going to say, so do you think people, when they hear the word digital, particularly to do with schools, have a kind of very narrow picture as to what it might be? You know, does yeah. it have to involve a computer? Because um, you're right, when you think about digital skills that we use, people that say, you know, I'm not really good at technology, then pick up their smartphone 
and yeah you know, I, I think more. that's it definitely people just think that oh if it's digital you must be either sitting with a tablet yeah looking at videos or sitting at a laptop typing away yeah aye yeah and i suppose you've got the perfect viewpoint of that because you're seeing it at the very earliest stage where kids can't do that kind of thing even if that was the plan because mm -hmm. they don't have the necessarily the skills or the patience to do it so you are seeing them really experimenting with with digital tools um, i think as well as the adult you've got to remember that you you're in charge yeah of what, i mean i've got ones that would come in and watch youtube all day long if they got the chance <laughs> <laughs> i've removed the youtube app yep. off the ipads yeah so they haven't got the choice of that and yeah. it's just no we're not doing that yeah, that's not what we're learning about. Well, even YouTube divides people because some people think of it purely as just a, a, an app that you can watch videos, whereas there are, you know, eighty-nine-year-olds who swear by it for their knitting or whatever it is that they're doing, or you know, a particular like card game that they want to learn. Um, oh yeah, I mean, it can be fantastic. One thing that I have sort of found, but I can't find one very much, is there's something called Safe Share TV. Okay that you can put a YouTube link into it and uh -huh. it cuts out all the adverts or links onto other videos. Uh, okay. But you only get so many free ones. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, a good tip, if you find a video that you want to share with parents, I think, I've, I'm not 100% sure on Seesaw, but certainly if you put it onto something like Google Sites, which is like a website, mm -hmm. when you put the video into it, it only plays just that video. And oh, I'm pretty sure on Seesaw it's the same. So, you know, if you saw a video that you wanted to share with parents and thought, well, I don't want them watching this, then it jumps to another one and jumps to another one as adverts. I think it just shows that one video and then sort of locks it down as well. So um, that's another wee tip. But I'm going to have a look at that. Safe Share. Safe Share TV, I think it's called. I think I've got it written down here. Yeah, Safe Share TV. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at that as well. I think um, you get 20 free in that and you have to start paying for it. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, fun. this has been a really interesting chat. I've um, it's been really interesting. To, you're the first sort of early years person that I've spoken to, and um, you know, in all the stuff that I've been doing, I've been learning about what people are doing in terms of school. Um, and I know that P one, P two teachers have struggled a little bit in terms of um, not having that face to face contact. So it's been really interesting to hear um, in a smaller setting. And I, I guess the relationships that you've built up with the kids and the parents definitely will help. Um, yeah. The fact that you know them and they know you so well um so it sounds like you know you've got everything going in the, in the right direction and that um, fingers crossed well that when we get back to some sort of normal you're gonna have kids that will be desperate to to get hold of those spheros again in the, the smart oh, yeah <laughs> so thank you so much for for joining us all right thank you for having me you're welcome um and hopefully we'll see you again some of the time on the digital diaries thanks very much thank you thank you